Welcome back to Nameless Tryouts and ACL. Day two, we got blue side versus red side. It swapped out a little bit. Some We gained some level one cheese again with the oh. pike. Hook is going to land. Ignite's going to be dropped. And it's going to be a simple first blood over to the Aphelios. Exactly who you want to get it to. Uh, that's a feels bad. <laughs> Aaron Dale walking up to the bush, not suspecting anything, ends up passing away his first death. And actually, funny enough, day one of tryouts as well, right? We saw um, Aaron Dale pull out the Silas in game number three. Actually, Decoy gonna take a decent amount of damage from X spells. Probably not gonna die. Might actually get chained again. Yeah, Flash might have to be burned, but he does have Sejuani there. Osu Miller is gonna be there too. Stop all that nonsense. But really good trade. He didn't get the reset off. This is actually really bad for Decoy. He oh. is starting to reset now. He might lose a couple minions here, though, for it. And a really aggressive trade from Arendelle. Arendelle. <laughs> Thinking of Lord of the Rings, that name. <laughs> yeah, actually, so I was going to say just a quick comment. Like, Aaron, Arendelle ended up dying level one. Uh, last, last yesterday of trials as well. So this guy is kind of used to dying level one. But Viserug, I think, a, oh, able to use a nice little bit of movement there uh, to dodge away from the first hook of the game. Obviously, you know, might end up coming back up on cooldown. But yeah, that's the power of you know the pike, right? Able just to walk at you, force um, the early. Uh, you know, you have to play back. You have the Yumi. You don't really have like an early aggressive support to play with you. Aaron Dill potentially looking for the camera, able to get that spell shit off there. But so far, both Zongars actually pathing up to the same side of the map this time around. Actually, never mind. Sejuani ended up going red to Krugs. And Wukong basically did a full did a blue into Gromp. Looking to punish Decoy a little bit for the low HP. Oh, that hook, if it landed, would have been a kill, but it ended up being for not. They didn't have to burn his flash. Just good movement overall from Decoy. Yeah, it is a bit of a feels bad though for Final Walk because obviously he just did only blue and Gromp invested a decent amount of time up to the top side gank there and ultimately did end up failing. Uh, well, not necessarily failing, but did end up wasting a decent amount of time. But uh, Miller is going to look for a bot gank here, but there is a control ward in the bush, so not going to be able to make any play happen there. Krangler looking for a roam into the mid lane potentially. Yeah. Oh, expels. But the, all the spells do land on this. The pullback for Aatrox is going to be there. And overall, pretty even trade, especially considering that Decoy did start out with lower HP. He is trading pretty well on there. Uh, the roam did go through, but it's just going to be sidestep the hook, and we're just kind of going into an even lane state again. Uh, the wave was shoved in from blue side, so it looks good. And ooh, really nice trades there. Good cues overall from Decoy on that. Yeah, and he's going to look to try to get this wave pushed in, but it does look like Expels is going to do a pretty good job of trying to hold the wave, but he lost a lot of HP from those minions, so not actually going to be able to hold up the wave at all. Kammer almost uh, getting hit by the chain last there, but Final Walk is here mid lane, only level 3, not really going to provide all of that much in terms of trying to pick up a kill there. Uh, Mr. Benhito trying to fight back onto Improving and Krangler, but they do have the wave advantage and Sejuani is also down on the bot side of the map as well. Looks like Pike might be looking for some shenanigans here but Sejuani is there on the lane just in case anything happens. They don't have vision though they don't know that final walk is here they just know that the pike is in the bush. It's, ghost is popped the flash Ooh. goes through the ignite goes through that it's gonna be a hard commit onto him. The twitch does end up flashing does he survive he is taking ticking ticking but he's not gonna be going down and auto and final walk does pick up OSU Miller on that trade yeah and actually not nice little play there you know final walk right place at right time was trying to look for a play down in the bottom side of the map and viscera using ghost aggressively there trying to get onto improving is uh, on improving is fun but did not end up flashing the initial stun from krangler there was able just to get a big chunk of damage on the initial and then ended up having to flash afterwards so i think maybe if he flashes the initial pike stun it could go a little bit smoother on the play but unfortunately uh, it did end up being a first blood, actually no, second blood of the game over to um, <clears throat> over to the uh, Ooh, jungler here. But Decoy taking a lot of damage. Through, but the flash is not going to be enough, and it's just going to be a simple pickup there from OSU Miller down onto Expels. He committed the flash, but was just not enough.
Yeah, he tried to get the last little bit of damage there, but the initial play, Miller able to cancel Kled out there. Really well done. Cammer trying to uh, deny Arendelle this wave, but actually going to get a decent little bit of a push out here, even though he was trying to get that wave pushed out. Arendelle does have the TP to get back into the mid lane, so should end up being pretty all right with the situation. Cammer does not have the health or the mana to really kind of keep this wave here in this position. I'm curious if Arendelle is going to actually end up TPing or if he's just going to walk. Um, if he does end up walking, he will obviously miss a decent amount of minions. Uh, so obviously that, that, that could be a decision he has to make. He is going to end up TPing to uh, the uh, mid lane tower. Um, but yeah, so far, uh, uh, game is uh, in the hands of the blue team here, mostly because the first couple early kills that have happened. But red side is fighting back pretty well. Yeah, and one thing I actually want to take a note on here. Oh, but meanwhile, Pike is going to land the hook onto Twitch, but nothing else is going to come out of it. Uh, one thing I do want to touch on real quick is the smite choices on both junglers. We see red smite for Wukong, which is pretty common. But on the other hand, we see Sejuani opting for the red smite herself as well, which I haven't I haven't seen that much, really, to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to see. I think I've seen mostly... Uh... I've seen a lot of green smites coming out of Sejuani. The extra shield that you can get on top of all of your HP does feel really, really good. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm curious to like, you know how it actually is going to end up playing out, right? Because if the red smite obviously does kind of come through, it gives you that little extra value uh, that you need, then you know it could feel just like very nice uh, in some of these team fights. Expels dashing back in, trying to get a little bit of damage onto the decoy. Not quite able to land anything yes yet, but red side looking for a four man dive into the bot side of the map. Final walk is here though. It, is, it will be a four versus three. Yeah, he sniffed out that something was going to happen. He's just right again, right there in the right time. But they do have the mouths of her ulti. The stun is going to go through, but the ulti is going to land onto the Ophelia. So if they hit the person tanking, is going to be the Sejuani. But that's just going to be a simple one for one pickup. And honestly, if you can get this wave in, it can be pretty worth it for red team to get that. Yeah, and obviously you are going to be able to deny uh, Aphelios some wave and some XP, some gold uh, from that little exchange. But it does it actually fails like a lot of damage. But he yeah, might, but he might dismount though. Yeah, yeah. he's just sort of right about to mount up again. That's why uh, Decoy didn't overcommit on that. But uh, Kled is going to be going in on the top side, but he ends up missing on the ultimate there. He won on the mid lane, just a quick little trade. But Pike is there to try and get the wave in for Kramer and uh, keep going on from there. Yeah, able to get the push out there in the mid lane. Camera actually, you know, what, what we talked about, the execution damage that you can have on the Silas, he does make CSing very easy on the Malzahar. Um, but overall, you know, I think, you know, I think when it comes to uh, this game itself, cool. Decoy starting to land a lot of damage. Chains do come back, not quite able to get the Q2 slap there. That would have dismounted Kled and would have actually potentially been a dive threat because it's 20 is on the top side of the map but so are three members of blue side both final walk and krangler are up in the area if they chose they choose to kind of come up here but decoy does have a ward so it will spot out final walk when he does kind of hop over the wall yeah he's just trying to get the wave in and try and go for a reset but this wave is kind of in a bad spot he is going to be seen but it's not enough he's already in there the otters are going to be going through and oh just a little bit of damage but it's not quite enough and just like that final walk is able to pick up the kill we want the mid lane we do see uh, Kramer get the ulti onto Silas. He's going to be forced to flash away. The Silas does not hit, and that's going to be a flash for an ultimate trade. Pretty worth it if I was blue side. Yeah, Krangler is here, though. He knows that he kind of wants to look for this cannon. Unfortunately, it does actually end up falling, so it does end up missing out uh, on that cannon purchase. But with the investment towards the top side of the map, Red Side is looking to do uh, the dragon in the process. Ooh. Nice hook landing but no extra CC to come through onto Ariandale because, like you mentioned, the, the ulti had already been used uh, from Kramer with a Nethercross. But Viscera is here, though. The Yumi ultimate is going to go through. The flash is committed. The ultimate Ooh. form Sejuani is good as well. The Yumi ultimate does get on everybody. That's going to be a camera going down to Viscera. The TP is committed. Kled does not have ulti just quite yet, so the TP was kind of a little bit of a waste when the play is already dead there. Yeah, I tried TPing in, tried to salvage the play as well. Final walk on an Ariandale. And that's the thing about Silas with that dash. He's just able to escape so many of these situations. Yeah, he's melee, but he, man, is he so ever mobile. He's just able to get in and out. Pike lands the hook. He's about to land the stun, but then dashes away. Same thing here. And, but, yeah, pretty good plays overall. We're seeing from blue side, able to catch, capitalize on that. But red side, showing signs of life, getting that dragon, and also getting that kill. Meanwhile, we're seeing the Kled ulti go in with the Wukong. He's not going to land onto the Aatrox, but the Aatrox is surely should be going down here. He is going to get the pullback onto the Aatrox here. The ultimate is to click through, so he does have that extra wound speed. But oh my goodness, the damage is just disgusting from the Kled. 
and that's going to be him picking up another one. Yeah, nice little pullback on the chain there from the Karmic Spells, able to uh, secure the kill there onto Decoy. And I think, you know, uh, obviously, you know, for, I guess, like, the game itself, like, we saw the mid lane roam play from the Twitch, from the Yumi. One of the most annoying things about Twitch and Yumi is the fact that, you know, both the cat and the rat uh, disappear uh, out of vision whenever uh, the ambush has come through from the, for the Twitch. So... Uh, basically just pop up out of nowhere, both champions are able to kind of make a play happen, and it does look like, you know, Sejuani looking forward to just playing the boss side of the map. There is a ward there, so the hop over from the Blast Cone will get spotted. Does not quite have the Glacial Prison either, so it's like, it looks like about a 7 second cooldown or so, maybe about a little bit less than that. And he is going to try to look for a play. He is on a ward though, he does recognize that he does need to end up sweeping that one out. There's also a ward in the river itself. Visra is ambushing in, looking for a play. Krango is the only one down here, though. Improving dead base. Yeah, just uh, some little trades here in the bot lane, you know, and getting some shoves in and getting some resets. Uh, a little bit of minions is going to be denied there, but overall, pretty good play. I mean, red side, uh, they don't need to do anything crazy proactive early on. The onus is not on them to do so. They have a really good scoring comp with the Yumi. They trucks in the Twitch. Uh, Meanwhile, for blue side, they do have to get something started, and that's why they're being so aggressive early on. Final walk again. Last game, he had really good early game, and here we see him again having a really good early game again, but this time on a different champion on the Wukong. Yeah, exactly. I mean, one of the great things we saw about final walk, actually, Decoy looking forward to a 1v2. Gonna land a Ooh. nice little sweet spot there. Decoy Expo does get dismounted. The Zion does have Glacial Prison. They oh, what the Herald charge. They want to take down this tower. The ulti does go through. And now, oh my goodness, the clone was placed perfectly, and now the pike is here. He's able to get the execute. It's going to be huge. They flash away, but the auto flash is going to be going through. The Wukong is going to dash back in to death. Shut down, hand it over to Viscera, exactly the person you want to give it to. The slow is going to go through. They hop over, but the poison is tick, tick, ticking. The shutdown goes over now to Arendale. That's a lot of shutdowns going through. And now the TP oh, the is on the ward. It's canceled by the pike. Not able to get into the bot lane in time, and now he's in a bit of an awkward spot where he has to go back mid. Yeah, yeah it's a very unfortunate thing, but uh, an even more unfortunate thing we're improving is the fact that he does not have Chakrams up and available to really kind of uh, secure a lot of the tower plates, but still picks up three tower plates on the bot side of the map due to the just the fact that they, on the top side they invested so many resources there. Viscera able to ambush up there. Did pick up this massive shutdown from Final Walk there to really kind of boost up his... He now has Blade of the Brewing King completed. He is a very, very powerful Twitch. But still, the gold lead is a 1,500 gold lead for the blue side. Yeah, it's pretty massive. And, uh, I mean, you need to kind of balloon this a little bit faster if you want to be blue side. If you want to try and uh, get this game going for you. Because, again, the scaling with the Yumi is pretty strong. You want to kind of get things wrapped up. But look at this. The Kled understands that he's just going ham onto the Aatrox. The damage he's putting down is insane. He has a full uh, Ravenous Hydra already on. So he's pretty strong right now with that item. Yeah, we see actually two Ravenous Hydras being built up. One by the Kled and one by the Aphilios. Mm. Uh, an item that we have probably never seen built by the champion. But Expel's almost taking that second little sweet spot there. But, I mean, just due to the item changes, it's very, very strong. Expel is actually going to get the tower here. Might actually look to run down Decoy. Yeah, he's just going to dismount here. But now with the dismount, the Aatrox is trying to get the all in. He does put down a lot of damage, but he just realized that he's not going to be able to get that. And now he's over and a simple kill from Expels. The hook does land onto Viscera on the bot side. And it's going to be a shutdown over to the Wukong. My bad, not shut down. Uh, gold handed over to the Wukong and also Krangler getting some of that sweet, sweet pike gold too. Yeah, nice little kill there onto uh, Viscera. I'm not sure exactly how he got caught out there, but was definitely out of position and ended up being basically blasted by the members that were already there. And if you look and see, you know, like, Obviously, like, you know, we've seen both Hydras being built up here. That You do see that stacking effect from the item. The, you get you get more Omni Vamp, you get more damage to come through. Ariandale getting hooked, ulted here. Yeah, got ulted and hooked, but he's able to flash out of the Pike Stun. And even though he was ignited, he isn't going to go down. And that's a lot a lot committed for this uh, uh, um, Silas. And he survived it, so, I mean, that's pretty good for him. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, we're seeing here Sejuani potentially can get onto the Philios, but it's not going to be that. And now we have this super fun Drake that has come back from the death, Kemtech. Yeah, we, we actually we saw Kemtech a couple of times yesterday like with the map changes. And 
I gotta say, I actually really like the what the map. I think uh, all the the new blast, not the new blast. Well, yeah, new blast cones, new uh, the Ooh. new plants that you can get all that stuff. But they are ulting for Viscera. Yeah, they just barely missed him. He went invisible, but he got spotted up by that pink ward. Are they gonna be able to catch him? No, they decide not to overcommit. Almost, yeah. almost. Yeah, just a little bit too much movement speed there, unfortunately. And not quite a good position from X spells there to really secure um, the kill there on Viscera. But Ooh. Miller, look on top side. Yeah, a little bit of catch on to the Wukong. Wukong does uh, choose to go back in. The Aatrox does find him with the pullback, and he is able to not find that sweet spot. My bad. Meanwhile, the Malzahar is trying to overchase, but Sauce is on the flank. He's able to dash forward. The ulti does go through onto the Wukong this time, and it is going to be him going down. The reset has been given over to Aatrox. He's able to get another knockup. The Malzahar is taken very, very low before Splash. He is still alive. Pike throws an experimental hook, but it does miss. Meanwhile, we see Expel losing his oh. line, trying to go into all of them, but the huge Blascom puts him all the way back to Africa, and it's just going to be the one for zero. Yeah, okay, one for zero there. Um, for the side of, you know, obviously for the side of red side there, able to get the kill there onto final walk. It's also going to be the red tarot taken up as well. Improving might look to steal it, but does not have the power of the smite to even pick that one up. And actually it's going to be a pretty solid victory despite the gold lead that blue team has been able to garner up here. We see, you know, final walk. It was attempting to initially go on to Miller there, but Miller is just so tanky on this edge one. And not only does he have the aftershock, actually, wait, we see X spells. Still sitting up here. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's just gonna be chilling here, looking for maybe a potential pick. But he decides that uh, the Twitch isn't gonna come and touch his wave, so he goes for just to clear, and then he's done. Um, very interesting overall on how these plays are happening. And I just want to take note on the time; it's around 17 minutes in. Uh, final walk around this time last game are having a little bit of a falter and. Uh, I'm not saying, oh, but Dalti is going to go through on the mouse hard, and that's going to be a pickup for Krangler. Simple pickup from them. And the ultimate from Expel, Ex, uh, Expels uh, is going to land on Sejuani, but nothing else is going to come out of it. <laughs> yeah, they are able to get the kill there and the tower as well, but it does look like Silas is making a play of his own to the bottom side of the map. Able to get another uh, outer tower here for Aaron. Actually, the first tower at the game for the red side there, so... Even though they're basically losing on the map, still able to kind of make a play happen. And, you know, obviously, you know, Dragon Dragon will be spawning up in about a minute and 30s time. And, you know, getting that mid lane tower down there for the blue side is obviously going to feel very, very good about your situation. Just because you can just control the map that much more, able to walk into the jungle that much more freely. Set up some vision and actually look for these plays. But you can see kind of like how the combo, right, is you get hooked into a Mazahara ultimate into just all the chain CC in the world. And unless you have QSS, you're not getting out of that Mazahara ulti. Yeah, and this, I do want to take also a note on the items again. We're seeing Rod of Ages being built on the Silas. Um, I haven't uh, seen how that's going to work out, but it looks like Aatrox might have been going for the Mazahara, but he gets spotted out by that new uh, new vision orb. Or Scar's Bloom. Scar's Bloom is the name. <laughs> Yep, and we do see uh, Dragon obviously is spawning up in about 50 seconds or so. So most likely both teams are going to end up gravitating towards that objective. It is just, it is a one to one Dragon score though. TP coming in for Ariandale finds Krangler. Yeah, Krangler takes a lot of damage. He is going to get ulted on that, and that should be him going down. But the heal comes back through, so he's going to survive just enough to be overbaiting them. The ultimate from a field is going to be huge, but the Pike ultimate stolen is going to be huge. He is going to be able to get two of them right back to back. That is huge triple kill for the Aatrox, and Expels is the last man standing. He is a strong clad, but the Exhaust is going to make him not so strong. He is taking a lot of damage here, and he's just going to back away from this, knowing that he cannot continue this. The Flash Forward is going to keep going through. He is going to be just picked up by Decoy, and that's going to be the ace for the Dragon and the mid lane turret. Yeah, nice little play there for the red team there. I mean, obviously, I think the TP there from Aaron there was actually really bold, TPing it basically into a situation where it was like a 1v3 almost, but they're actually able to, uh, you know, basically re not, not rewrite the ROM, but actually able to win up the fight by basically dealing so much damage to Pike before the fight ever started, able to take away the Pike ultimate as well, getting reset after reset, additional gold after additional gold, and at the end of the fight, it was what, what was looking like a four and a half, five thousand gold lead all of a sudden, right down to less than a thousand. Yeah, really good play from them. And uh, again, the scaling only goes in their favor. Uh, you know, if they, <laughs> this is looking very similar to game one already in the kind of the same game state where Blue Side had a really strong lead. 
uh, and they were pushing really hard to try and keep the lead going. And now Red Side just finds uh, some really good fights in this mid game to try and get themselves back. Uh, maybe this is, you know, going to be a little bit different in the end, though. We might see a blue side pick up some key champions here, especially with the Malzahar. It's a little bit easier to do pick comps with a Malzahar, where you just basically perma attack the person that they're, that the, that Malzahar is ulting, and uh, you should be able to get an easy one kill there. Yeah, that's obviously going to be the idea there with the with the use of the Nether Grass as much as they possibly can. And obviously, you know, Richard, unfortunately, not going to get a great usage there. Just didn't have enough time to really get a lot of value out of it. But Arendale actually posturing over to Kramer. He does land the chains, but it's not going to stun because he had the chain. But they look at that. The silence is going to go. Oh, beautiful silence buffer. He does cancel the ultimate. Is he going to be able to get out? He does flash away to his escape. Meanwhile, the Kled did TP in. The ulti is going to go through onto him. The hook does land the ultimate. To oh, nice. Panel, but it is going to be going over to Arendale. He is going to get the slow onto the Kled. He's going to be going in, but oh my goodness, the Pike Hook was clean. He does cancel the charge onto him, but the Twitch is ulted. He is putting down damage. Is he going to be able to get the Expunge? Not quite just yet. The Felix ult he does go through. Does not have enough damage to kill the Sejuani. She is burning, but the ultimate from Pike does guarantee the kill. He is trying to heal up a little bit with his passive and try and get another execute potentially here onto the Silas. Wukong does go through. Does he have the ultimate? No, he does not. He just dashes forward. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, we see the Aatrox oh, getting onto the Kled. And I think that's going to be the end of it. No, I lied. He is trying to dash forward again for the Pike. Pike lands the hook. He does get the stun onto the Aatrox. They're now fully committing onto him. The final Q does not land onto the Wukong, which was the target you wanted to go for. And now that is a shutdown handed over to the Philios. That is a massive shutdown. You want it on the carry, and that's who got it. Yeah, honestly, I'm kind of surprised uh, Decoy has a 700 gold shutdown. Like, he's 4 and 6, and I think... Let me, let me let me check, actually. Yeah, he's, like, down in gold to Kled, but, uh, you know, that's fine. Riot, it's Riot's game, not mine. Um, but, you know, at, at the end of the fight, it's actually, it went really for a red side there. Ariandale and Miller, nice, nice sway of mechanics, actually able to get a kill there early on the camera. But then, as they were walking out, unfortunately, Decoy did obviously get end up getting caught out there and, and was... Uh, you know, uh, obviously killed there towards the end. So it is going to be a four versus five. And looks like a potential play for the Baron here. Vision already being set up, trying to, like, see if they can catch someone as they're walking in unannounced. And it does look like... It doesn't work because they already have Vision on the Baron itself. That is true. It was a blue, a blue pink, a blue ward there. So the bait would have been good if they did the initial sweep for Vision. But they forgot to do the initial sweep for Vision. And they assumed that there was no Vision in the Baron, trying to get somebody to walk in. But now they did clear all the vision, so now would be a good time to try and go for these baits uh, and try maybe look for like a potential, you know, even a potential sneak there and start. A lot of damage onto Kled though. Oh my yeah. goodness, we are going in, and that's just an absolute one shot from uh, uh, Versra. Meanwhile, the Kled charges to try and escape. He is running away, but the Sus does just take his ultimate straight back and is able to put down the damage. He does have a uh, Magi Soul Stealer. He's putting a lot of damage, but the remount is going to be good. He does dash back in. He is going to be dismounted again for the second time this fight. And uh, he's going to just land another oh. chain. And it's just going to be a simple one for one. And the Baron has been started. This is going to be a number six Yes, TP. The TP, it might be going through. He is half HP. Oh my god, the pike went in. Not sure exactly why he did that. Now we're going to see Final Walker going down two in the back of the pit. And Malzahar for sure is going to be taken down here. And that's going to be a clean ace for the side of red. And Baron. Yeah, yeah, and all of a sudden, the game has just completely flipped on its head. Very similar to what we saw in game number one as well. One team completely dominating almost all stages of the game. And then a major mistake there. We see, obviously, if initially it was improving. Gets caught out. Ooh. Actually, Arendel. Really good use of the stopwatch there to be able to get swap the aggro onto Sejuani and pick up a super clean dive onto the Aphelios. Yeah, really good just showing of mechanics here for the entirety of the red side here. We saw a lot of very, very small things throughout the entire fight, but it started with improving, getting caught out, basically signaling, hey, this is a 4 versus 5, we can go towards this Baron. And then even Arendelle getting a solo kill on the bottom side of the map over to Expels. And even with it, they chose to go for the 4 versus 3 up on the top side of the map and felt like they were strong enough to do it. Unfortunately, they did not. They could not quite get into Viscera. Viscera flashed back over the wall to gain just enough distance to really protect himself from the initial like onslaught coming onto him. And now that's going to end up being, obviously, you know, Dragon MC. That's the third Dragon of the game going to play red side. And you mentioned that Magi, so, uh, Magi is for Ariandale. That's now 20 stack Magi. Ooh, meanwhile, on top side, we are going to see them try and get something out of this play. They do get the... 
Ooh. Ooh, the hook, but not the stun, and a lot of damage traded onto Pike. And that's the problem with Pike. After you get to past the mid game, he's not that strong anymore. He can't do the same amount of damage, and he just becomes an execute bot, and he just needs to get these people low. The problem is, is that Aatrox heals, Silas heals, the Yumi's healing everybody else as well, and that means that when they get past that threshold, there is a chance that they can just heal past it, and then your ultimate becomes useless. But a good little catch onto the Silas here, a good chain TC. But he, again, the healing's just so strong, oh. and they're able to just trade a kill there straight onto final walk. Wow, the damage from so much range from Twitch there. The poison, the red buff, able to pick up the kill. I think Kled is ulting in the mid lane, but Decoy able to walk out of it. Krangler might look for a hook. <laughs> they are overcommitting here a little bit, and the Silas is uh, fancying this. He does have a Yumi straight on him. They dodge the silence, but not quite. He does get hit, but he is still looking for potentially something else. He is on vision. And he is slow. Ooh. The hook, I'm not sure how that didn't hit, to be honest. It looked really, really close to his frame, didn't it? But you can see the power of the Yumi. Just constant projecting, pr projecting, prowling, prowling projectile, sorry. Um, and Aphelios, ooh, not quite able to land the Aphelios ultimate from the silo. This would have been actually a decent amount of damage. But instead, it is a 5 versus 4 here. Aatrox is pushing the mid lane. But all those Qs from Yumi are landing so much poke. Yeah, it's a lot of damage going through. And the thing is, with the Baron, it makes it a little bit easy. They don't have to hit the tower. They just need to make sure the main stay alive to be able to do that. And with the low range that they have, both teams can't really go in. But the Pike is going to try and catch onto the Aatrox again. He keeps going onto this guy. The healing is so insane. He does get the reset, but he is probably going to be able to go and damn me on the other side. We're going to see the Malzahar being traded by the Sidrani with their ultimate. The Yumi is going to be going onto the Kled. Kled's going to get a lot of damage on the other side of the Sidrani. She is taking more damage. Is she going to be able to escape? She does. The Sauce takes the Wukong off these dash oh. back in. He's going to be able to pop it. He gets popped up himself, but now he's going to be going through. The, the zone is going to go through. The Yumi still is alive and healing the Silas throughout the whole fight. This champion is not balanced, and that's why it had 100% win rate at Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, Yumi obviously has been a very powerful champ for a very long period of time. Uh, but I think, obviously, you know, I think Red Side is just doing a really good job of just, like, balancing the fight, like, on a base on a knife set. It's like, knowing when to go in, knowing when they can exactly go in these situations. And, you know, Visra, he's been a very quiet carry so far in this game, right? 7, 1, and 6 hasn't really been the one, like, continuously popping off in all these fights, but dealing a lot of damage for his team, team fight after team fight, definitely showing another very solid performance in this game. Yeah, his DPS numbers are um, pretty high, I'm guessing. He's been uh, consistently being able to get these auto attacks off on, in these fights with his ultimate, and also just very intelligent positioning overall. Ghost does allow him to do that too and get into like really clever spots where normal AD carries might not be able to because of it. Uh, so, you know, he's playing these fights as good as you can expect. Yeah, and I'm uh, obviously, you know, um, coming towards uh, most likely the end of the game here because the you know, red side is just continuously pushing it down the throats of the blue side here. Obviously, you'd like to see the like if they are able to kind of come back in this game, but you know, blue side doesn't really have a, a great like scaling champion back into the game. Like, yeah, you have an Aphelios, but Aphelios, like we've like we've seen, like, he hasn't really been able to just kind of stand his ground and fight the enemy team. Mm -hmm. Looking on a decoy. Yeah, and again, they keep going and using the Kled ultimate and trying to get these five men onto one place. They're trying to get the picks. They're trying to force this pick comp on, but it's not working for them right now. They are getting a lot of damage on this tower, and right now, Red Side doesn't have the wave clear they need, but they are now running away from this because they realize that the Silas is splitting. Pike does land the hook onto the Sejuani, but nothing else is going to come out of it. Twitch is finally seen, and they're just trying to back off and get in time for the Silas. But yeah, but they, are they going to yeah, be able like, to he's stop He's just pushing for free. The Nobody has started the recall yet. And the mid lane is being pushed. They're trying to get something done. That's another turret down. That's two turrets the Silas has been able to take out by himself. And now he's on the inhibitor. That's going to be a free inhibitor. Dragon is spawning at 45. Baron spawning at 30. And nobody really recalled. They all just kind of walk back into their base. Yeah, Silas is going to basically just gonna keep on pressuring the base tier. And it, even so, Dragon is spawning up the Chemtech Soul. Could be. I haven't actually seen Kentex Soul actually completely in action just yet. Um, so I'm curious to see kind of how like it's going to end up with, you know, really providing, um, you know, the actual little boost that most souls give you. Like, I think soul win rate is like 90%, but instead they're going to bait it. Oh, beautiful ultimate straight onto the Aphelios. He doesn't have cleansers, no Mikhails, and that's going to be two quick kills picked up. Three, counted four, just one more, and they're not even going to be able to, they don't, they don't even need to go for the soul. They can just go straight up for the end. Man, I was excited for Kim Tech, so man, why did you guys have to end the game? <laughs>
Yeah, Sad. they just decided to go crazy for the for the final there, and just trying to go for a hard push. And uh, I think it's gonna be just a simple shove of the wave, and not much Pike can do. He's just trying to clear the mid wave, but uh, they don't need mid wave. They have top wave to be able to end this game with. And again, it's 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 a very similar draft in the style, you know, scaling to win, and early game draft from blue side, and looks like scaling right now is the play. Yep, and that is going to be the end of game number two. You know, obviously, I think, you know, this game a little bit, obviously, towards the end of it, it started kind of getting a little bit out of control um, for the blue side. Wasn't quite able to really kind of stick things going. But once again, blue side actually had a very solid uh, gold lead throughout the, throughout the early stages of the game. Uh, definitely kind of played that one out very, very well. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite able to really pull through. And it was um, uh, the end of the game was over uh, in this in that fashion. So, but I think you know, Arian Dale obviously uh, was very, very confident in his play. Had a lot of magic stacks uh, along with Viscera, and even like Ben Heath, though, obviously you know playing the U. We talked about like you know massive win rate for the champion at Worlds. Like did not lose a single game um, uh, throughout the entirety of the Worlds event. So, obviously going into the last game of the night here, very, very shortly. So hopefully we're gonna be able to you know, get that one started up and see how quickly we can get going. Yeah, I mean, I do want to note also on the damage we're talking about. I mean, uh, we saw Aatrox doing the most, which is pretty standard for what Aatrox does as a champion himself, and he was brawling a lot in top lane. I'm guessing those damage numbers were mostly in lane. And then, surprisingly, actually, was the Silas. It wasn't the Twitch that came in second there. Twitch did put out quite a bit himself, but the Silas was doing a lot of work for them. Yeah, honestly, it doesn't really surprise me. Like he is, he was doing just so much damage at the entirety of uh, of these team fights, just like constantly, like just AOE after AOE, continuously looking just to dash forward. And you know, I think you know one of the things um, that um, we we've seen kind of so far, like, like so out of like Aaron Dell himself, like when he played the Silas the other day, he was definitely looking to uh, constantly dash forward, land those chains, land the continuously AOE auto attack passes that he gets time and time again. And really, you know, I think uh, so far, like he did feel, it did feel like he felt like very, very confident. And that's one of the reasons why Sejuani was a very powerful champion during Worlds itself, right? Because we just see uh, so much of the the power of the top side melee champions, where you can just constantly brawl, constantly look for these exchanges, and just have so much AOE. And I said, like basically a guaranteed stun uh, from the side of from the side of Sejuani. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but we should be coming into game number three here very shortly and uh i think there are a few changes we're going to be seeing here we're going to be seeing some familiar faces and some uh i don't think anybody knew i think this is just basically the people we already saw today yeah t t today is basically I mean, so not all about today but the last game is basically gonna be, uh all the faces that we've already seen so far um we are going to see once again on the blue side of burza uh, up in the top lane, OSU, Miller in the jungle. Ariandale is going to be the mid laner for the blue team this time around. Baz B, once again, going to be sliding into the AD carry. And then Potato, or Admirable Potato, sorry, is going to be the blue team for the blue team. And then on the red side, we have Expels up in the top side of the map. Final walk once again in the jungle for the third game in a row. IYB up in the mid lane. We see Improving down in the AD carry position. And Detro. Uh, back in the support position once again. It's going to be exciting to see how they're going to play out. I wonder what Detroit's going to pull out. I mean, the Pike definitely is an interesting pick overall. Uh, I'm still a little bit conflicted on the Aphelios first pick. They must have had a lot of priority on it, thinking that maybe that they needed a tank shred. I mean, if you're going to go for Aphelios, you might go Kraken Slayer and uh, try and like uh, hope that you can kind of shred these front lines faster. But uh, leaving up the Aatrox and Yumi... Uh, for the second rotation, just pick up in R one and two is uh, very interesting. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's it's one of those things, right? Where um, you know when you have this Aphelios in the, as a blue one option, uh, typically you do want that Enchanter to come through. But maybe it's one of those things where they kind of just pivoted out of it. And when you when you pick a champion like Aphelios that early, it's like typically it's like your draft kind of warps around him because you do want to have him obviously be very very useful in the game unfortunately this game he just really wasn't quite able to be as useful as we'd liked for him to be of course um but but overall i think you know uh, i think he still had a pretty solid game in the early stages of the game but once things started spiraling out of control he unfortunately wasn't quite able to have as much of an impact as he'd like to have 
But uh, hopefully the drops are, you know, hopefully we, we see like either two scaling comps or, or two just super hot for aggro comps because I, I don't want to see uh, an aggro comp early, like an early comp and then a late game comp because we've seen that two games in a row. Uh, so far, it's looking like uh, scaling is the way to go for uh, for now. But uh, who knows, maybe they just draft like something completely psychotic like Renekton top, Zed mid, uh, <laughs> you know, freaking Lee Sin sub jungle, like something just absolutely like hyper early like samira nautilus bot lane and just hope to god that you end the game before 20 minutes <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not sure honestly uh obviously we, we've seen like some scaling options some aggressive options coming through for both team for well, not for both teams but for both sides of the drafts um and really so far um obviously when it comes to um you know, I guess like the game, the games itself, right? Like, you know, it's not necessarily to say that either style is correct or incorrect. Typically, it kind of just comes down to execution, which so far, both losing teams today have lost with 5k gold leads, right? So um, typically, it's like, even though like you might have the less scaling team, if you are able to kind of build up um, that 5,000 gold lead, you should be able to execute up on that uh, finish just because of the two gold leads you've been able to garner uh, through the early stages of the game, so. Um, yeah. But um, hopefully we, we um, we're going to be getting these players uh, into the lobby for the last game of the night. This is obviously the end of day two. We still have one more day at this for the for the, at least this week. Um, I do believe we're going to have another uh, weekend of tryouts after Thanksgiving, uh, which will also I believe will also be on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That hasn't quite been uh, determined just yet, but that might end up being our plan as of right now. But this will obviously be the last game of the night, and then we still have Sunday left to go as well. Yeah, Sunday's going to be a fun time to watch. I mean, like, uh, again, I think we talked about it already previously in this podcast, but just to recap, basically, uh, coaches are going to be primarily uh, controlling the draft on that one uh, and uh, kind of having these set comps already from what I understand and what uh, what you were explaining to me. So it's going to be pretty cool to see how that's going to how that's going to flow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think um, it's gonna it's gonna be one of those things where, um, obviously, you know, like if, if you do have like the pre-scripted type of drafts coming through for tomorrow, it'll be interesting to see like just exactly like what kind of champions we are gonna be able to get to see out of these players. Uh, whether or not it's gonna be comps that are like okay, like this comp should win, or if, if it's gonna be like a 50-50 situation where either team can win coming through. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I think it is going to be, um, still really cool to see, even if it is kind of like scripted in a way where it's like, okay, like this is the lane you're going to be playing against and ultimately like kind of how the games do end up like breaking down. Um, so yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting to watch. Yeah. We're just waiting right now to get into our champion select. Uh, and, uh, what do you think is going to be picked or banned here on the, on either side? I'm going to predict. A feelers is not going to be B one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I mean, if, if it is, if it isn't a B and B one, then we'll have to see some built around it a little bit more, obviously, so you can kind of we can see the champion function a little bit easier. Um, but we've seen so far two hacker bands already, but those were mostly attached to Miller, um, and really like the bands kind of coming through. Uh, kind of have been a little bit like maybe a little bit easier to kind of execute, but I think um, so far at least. What the? Did you um, just see what I saw? Oh. Uh, no, I I unfortunately clicked the wrong button, and I I I almost broke something. So, but I fixed it. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So hopefully, uh, we're gonna end up. You know, um, hopefully, like the game will be a little bit like similar this time around. So far, like like you said, we've seen two different type of styles. We've seen some scaling on one side. We've seen some aggressive play on one side. We've seen the aggressive team get leads early, and we've seen the scaling team just win the game uh, as the game kind of progresses. Once the aggressive team just makes a little bit, a little bit too many mistakes, um, so we might see them a little bit similar. We might not. We might still see the same style. We've seen, we've seen so far throughout the entirety of the day. Um, but uh, I, I am pretty excited to see uh, once again. Uh, you know, Baz beat back. I think he had a pretty solid game number one on the Varus as well. I think he did a pretty fine job on that champion. Um, and I think, you know, um, obviously, uh, uh, Miller and Final Walker dueling it out in the jungle once again for the third game in a row. Um, so these guys kind of like know each other a little bit better. They kind of identify uh, a little bit more exactly how things are playing out. Um, 
and you know it should it should be it's still it should be relatively fun right because we see um you know admirable potato as well coming back in the bot lane landing with bads b uh two of the players that i think have been actually playing uh some of the better league of legends on the bot side of the map but still have a pretty strong pairing as a duo i mean it's going to be exciting to see how they're going to face off against their opponents here which uh it's uh dylan and improving or ditro and improving my bad uh and uh yeah, I mean, improving uh, had a, a decent performance on the Aphelios. Um Obviously, they they played the last game as good as they can uh, with the with the bot lane they were given. Uh, they tried to get really aggressive early. They were getting early shoves and getting early vision as well for their jungler. So uh, I'm excited to see kind of how they play with maybe with maybe just different picks on on their side there. Yeah, um, I think, you know, one of the things that well, obviously it's great about a tryout, right, is the fact that you're able to kind of just show like your diversity and like your ability to uh, just like uh, branch out your champion pool and figure out what exactly you want to play, especially, you know, when you have a coach in the, your VC, you're, excuse me, uh, you're able just to kind of be like, okay, like I kind of want to play this champion or the coach is like, hey, I want to see you play maybe this or this, like, what do you think? And able to provide like your own little uh, information about the game and it also gives uh, you know it gives the players uh an opportunity to look at like you know the coach's styles like okay like what do you value as a coach like what are some champions that you think are really op and like see like you know if you like the way the coach is kind of like, playing like with their style right um so uh it is pretty interesting to see obviously like, you know like kind of like being with a coach for the very first time um but yeah hopefully we're able to kind of get the draft going here um relatively soon uh kind of get this last game going yeah, I mean, now I'm saying is that uh, they're lucky that I'm not in, th in there because I'd be just saying, all right, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do Soraka top, Ivern jungle, uh, Karma <laughs> mid, and then we're just going like super hyper carry vein. And then in the bottom, we're going to have a Lulu. Like that, I, I just I just slap that in the comp. Nobody's going to see it coming. And you're putting all your eggs in one basket and pray to God that the vein carries. <laughs> Holy. I mean, when you have that many shields, that many heals, I mean... My uh, definitely putting a lot of faith for sure into just you as a uh, as a player and as a person, right? So hopefully, um, you know, like you know, if that were the case, you'd really have to perform, you'd really have to execute, and if you were, then all of a sudden, like you know, you're someone that they can rely on, right, to to actually like win games for them. So uh, it's totally. been pretty exciting. It's been um, be pretty interesting to see, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I have a slight suspicion. Yeah, the slight suspicion might not happen. You're right, but. Uh... <laughs> Uh, they, you never. I mean, again, that, that's that's all I'm saying. Like, if that that was me in there, I'd, I'd be I'd be I'd be saying that. I'd be like, guys, I know I know what you want to play. You want to play all these carry champions and damage champions, and you might want to be playing tanks. But listen, we're slamming this comp. It's the draft Konya, you know, the final draft to end them all. And uh, we're praying and we're praying and we're hoping that something happens. And if not, then we're doing Master Yi jungle, right? <laughs> and Seraphine bot okay. with uh, some other different mid laner and like, Sona. And then you're putting everything in the master E. Oh, I, wow. I have different, I, you know, I have a bunch of crazy strategies, you know, I'm, I'm cooking them up. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, definitely is pretty crazy. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, no, I'm not necessarily surprised, but like, you know, there's the Tarek jungle, not Tarek, yeah. but like, yeah, Tarek, yeah, Tarek jungle, master E mid, uh, have the oh. like, this playing for the enchanters, but we are getting into the last game of the night. Draft is starting up. And we'll see, first ban, first ban for both games on the blue side has been the Hecarim two games in a row. Um, let's, let's see if the third time in a row is going to be Hecarim as well. Oh, it's going to be the oh, Heimerdinger. Nope, Heimer. Super strong and a press support. Uh, really good against most range and melee matchups, so uh, understandable. A Jin is very interesting to be in. Oh my goodness, they're going so fast. A Jin and Kiana ban. Uh, haven't seen those champions in a long, long time. And Hecarim is being prioritized. I guess they think that they're going to go for a first pick since they didn't ban him in the first two rotations. And Aphelios, okay. Respect. Yeah, definitely not wanting to play against the Aphelios on the red side. But we will see, obviously, you know, what the blue side pick is going to be here. Uh, both, sorry, three AD carry bans taken off the table here uh, by both teams here. So definitely going to go down the well a little bit in terms Caitlin of the priority up. of the AD carries. Yep, Caitlyn is up. Um, she's not the best tank killer in the world, right? So if you put uh, Caitlyn into the game, got to make sure you, uh, if the, the other team obviously drafts other tanks, um, then you might have to have other champions around her that can deal that type of damage. But instead, going to end up first picking the Lucian here. Might even look for a potential Lucian Nami in the bot lane. 
Yeah, Nami without uh, Lucian without Nami isn't the best in my opinion. I think uh, a better pickup there would have been the Nami because Nami can play with other uh, AD carries, unlike the Lucian can play with other supports, at least in the previous uh, patch. Uh, I'm not sure how Lucian is right now with his current patch because I haven't seen him that much. Uh, but we will see the Poppy is going to be picked up instead. And that's probably going to be a Poppy jungle. A uh, very strong pickup. Uh, really good for uh, when with phase rush, just getting in situations and getting right out. Tanks a lot of damage uh, and can get a lot of early game uh, shenanigans started. Yeah, I mean, I think Poppy is a very powerful pick in itself just because like, not only do you have a decent amount of damage early in the game, but you also have a decent amount of setup. Like, you can slam people into the wall. You can deny those dashes to come through with your steadfast presence. And uh, it's just a very powerful, like, you know, jungler in itself with the damage-wise. But instead, improving, going back to the Draven that he played in day number one, recognizing that Lucian and the Nami pairing is most likely going to come out, and they're going to look to play aggressive in their own right, saying, hey, like, if you want to play the Lucian Nami, that's perfectly fine. We will play our champion. We will just out-aggressive you in lane. And like you were saying, the Lucian Nami is going to be most likely picked up here uh, for blue side. But yeah, Draven being slammed already, that's uh, a very... I think it's one of the most underrated answers to Lucian Nami, just because of how much early game damage Draven by himself can do. And yeah. we're hovering Trundle and Udyr. I think uh, out of those two champions, Udyr probably fits a little bit easier, but the Trundle could be good for just getting that ultimate off onto the Poppy and the Pillar. I probably am thinking that they're going to go for the Udyr, though. Have to wait and see. I mean, they're obviously both really solid champions uh, to kind of pick. Does look like the last little bit of the hover is going to go over to the Udyr. Udyr being locked in. And honestly, I think, you know, Trundle's one of those champions where, like, yeah, like, um, he still has the early game presence, but Trundle does basically deny the enemy team from picking other tanks, right? Because you can just slam Subjugate on them. Um, and you don't really have that, that extra built in tanky stats uh, that you typically normally have when it comes to AD carries. Um, not AD carries, but just like tanks in general. Um, but ooh, Alistar might end up being the pickup here on the red side. Yeah, th that, that does mean it is going to end up drawing away that Silas ban because you obviously don't want to give the enemy team uh, Alistar ultimate with Silas. That's just like you're basically it's asking that sentence. Yeah. That sentence. Yeah. Good ban on that side. Uh, the mid laners have yet to pick up their champion. Same with top lane. So I'm suspecting that maybe we get rid of the Aatrox if we're not looking to pick it. Um, and since we are, the blue side doesn't have the ability to do that. They should be looking at that. But instead, they go for a Victor ban. Pretty strong mid laner, solid for wave clear. Early game's pretty decent. It doesn't really lose that hard to any matchups right now. Uh, you know, it's better just to get rid of it. Uh, an answer to a lot of these, like, you know, good champions to get into team comps, especially the ones that they're looking for right now, maybe like an Azir in the mid lane. Uh, that's what I'll be looking at, uh, potentially. But uh, we'll see what else they're going to be looking for here on their red side ban. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, yeah, Atrix ban coming through does make a lot of sense, like you're mentioning. And I think, you know, uh, champions like Azir obviously are still going to be very poignant in the meta because they have so much ability to just affect team fights the way they do. Um, so much range, so much potential to uh, just like zone control the enemy team away from a lot of the objectives. And um, it is still very powerful with like a Lucian and a Nami, but I'm curious, like, you know, what the red side pick is going to end up being to kind of round out their type of composition. Because you know, you've already basically built in your entire uh, bot lane here. So it is most likely going to be solo lane focused. I would imagine Poppy is going to slot into the jungle. We did see Poppy top though. Um, so uh, it could it theoretically be a pop lane, top lane Poppy flex uh, as a potential here. But instead it is going to end up being, um, we'll have to wait and see like you know, what this pick is going to be here on the red side. Because that basically is going to give away exactly where the Poppy is going. Unless you lock it mm. mid lane here. Lilia being locked in is technically still a flex. I yeah. have been seeing it play top lane uh, into several tanks, um, but it is still a pretty good jungler into Udyr. You can just outrun him. Exactly. I was, I was thinking the same thing. It doesn't show your hand completely because it can be flexed in the top lane, same as Poppy. Um, and yeah, it's really good into tanks. Uh, Set is going to be picked up here, though. Uh, pretty good champion, but I think Lilia and Poppy should be fine against him, either one. Uh, I think Lilia it sets kind of uh, really hard to play for set just gets kited out pretty much the whole way through. Um, meanwhile, for the final pick, I am thinking Azir is probably going to be your best bet here to be able to get some of that disengage and also engage option 
and it is going to be this year. Yep, you like to see it. Obviously, uh, it's, it's a really solid pick. You can deny the Alistar engage. You can protect yourself. If Lily or Poppy ever get too close to you, you can just dash away. Um, so, and, and like, like we talked about, like it just it just deals so much damage uh, with the Azir soldiers to just uh, stab, continuously stab the members. But um, obviously, the last pick is going to end up being the counter uh, to Azir. But like, typically, uh, champions that counter Azir are typically champions that have range or champions that can get very, very close to him. So it is going to be a champion like Irelia that could end up sticking to him, which most likely signals to me that Irelia will be going into the mid lane. I don't think Irelia will be a very good matchup in the set because set likes to bully melee champions as much as he possibly can. Um, so we should be going into draft here very shortly. Yeah. The, 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 the thing with the draft that we just saw here is also there's a chance for them to swap lanes as well. To, to If you want to, you can put the set mid lane and duel with the Irelia. And Azir versus Lilia seems like it would be like just a negative matchup. Like both of them just don't do really do much. They just end up farming, which favors the Azir later on into the game. So they could look for maybe a lane swap uh, later into the game. But uh, we'll just have to take a look at it and see what they kind of go for with the game plan that they, they were suggested. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, this is going to be the last game of the night. So obviously, thank you for those that have stuck around the entire night uh, watching our NACL tryouts play through. I uh, really appreciate each and every one of you coming out. But I do believe we are going to go to a short break here because players are lining up in lobby, going to get the, the actual draft going through in the client. And we still have the spectator light to go through. So I uh, should be going into game here very, very shortly. But I still have to say thank you for sticking around for our last and final game as we are going to go to a quick break. Make sure to drink water.
Welcome back, guys, to Nameless, the Nameless, NACL tryouts, day two. As always, I am Fluffy here, and with is Orion, and we already seen some level one shenanigans from the Kragler again, trying to do something. <laughs> Ooh, but good, good value though uh, from Admirable Potato, right? Because he has the spell thieves, able to get the additional sixty gold. I mean, yeah. Um, Detro able to get the award in there, uh, still but able to, I mean, able to back off there, but still does give a little bit of a donation over to, um, that top side there. Johnny Rockets. I don't think he's, I'm not sure if he saw that ward being placed by the Poppy or not. I didn't necessarily see if the, if the ward thing was being seen, but, uh, obviously Udir will be seen on this blue buff when he does start it. And final walk, no actually information being given to him per se. Uh, but we'll be starting on the top side of the map. Same with Uter. Yeah, and it's going to be uh, definitely interesting to see. I haven't seen a Lilia jungle in a while. Uh, we were talking about this in the champion select that it could be Lilia top, could be Poppy uh, top. It didn't really depend. Uh, I thought that with the matchup and also the fact that Poppy jungle is just really good, I thought that it was going to be Poppy jungle and Lilia top, but uh, looks like I was taking him for a ride on that one. You know, it looks like it's the Lilia jungle, which is a very a uh, different play style for final walk because we saw him uh, two games in well um diego not really like the strong like super super strong early but still has like quite a bit of early prio uh and then the wukong which is really strong early to now a uh, pretty good scaling jungler in the lilia yeah absolutely and i think you know obviously we would talk about the early game power of the straven right but when you have an alistar as your support at level one you just can't really play the game until you hit level two maybe even level three that's when also becomes basically a really really good champion until he hits that marker he's basically a walking cannon um <laughs> yeah. and doesn't really actually provide anything for his team um so that's why you can see that the push is the push is coming through for both Batsby and for admirable potato um but obviously Aaron Dell actually and even Aaron Dell doing a solid job early on in this game just constantly putting pressure on the IYB making sure he can't actually farm that well but as the game does go on the bot lane in the mid lane will start becoming a little bit more dependent on, like, actually, um, you know, like, making sure that, you know, you don't really get uh, too aggressive uh, in those lanes, because I really, uh, and his, I really, uh, and his bot lane can get very, very aggressive. Krangler going in, though. Yeah, he went in for a quick little trade, but the Draven is going to be putting down a lot of axes. I mean, Krangler did get to level three and was able to get a quick little combo knock up. Uh, no summoners were burned from either side, just ignited, traded for the heal. Uh, but it is just going to be that for now. Uh, Arendale doing a lot of damage onto uh, IYB and uh, looks like maybe Uja could go for a gank here. There is no vision, but Lilia is set up already for a potential counter. He is walking to scuttle, maybe. No, she's in. Yeah, she's definitely in position. She want to make sure that the wave can crash here. Um, obviously, Miller is still looking for a gank as well. And both junglers are basically on the exact same uh, type of path. But actually, Udir has done his entirety of his jungle, right? Hasn't even skipped a single thing. Lilia did not do the blue or the gromp just yet. So she's going to backtrack to pick that one up. And Udir is just going to path up towards the top scuttle. Potentially could look for a play onto Expels, depending on how well Johnny Rockets can hold this wave, right? Up in the top side of the map. Uh, because so far, like, Expels is not going to get this wave to crash. He is smartly going to place a ward, though, so it, uh, Miller does kind of come in. He will be in the area. Nice stun into the wall, though, allowing a little bit of chunk damage on the set. Yeah, just getting a little bit of those procs, getting the grasp, and then running away. But the Udyr is there. The flash goes forward, but I unfortunately, I don't think anything came out of it. So he does burn flash for flash there on the top side. Uh, not a lot much has been accomplished, and Udyr still in the area trying to see if maybe... Take the skull crab and see if there's anything else to take afterwards. Stun Ooh, lands on the mid lane though, but it's not gonna be that poppy. Does take a lot of damage on the bot side. We are gonna be seeing the Lilia going in onto the Nami. Nami does be give it up to the Lilia. First blood. Meanwhile, on the other side, we do see the grass proc get, getting him off, but it's gonna be the drop down to one HP. Udir is That's just no charging, flash. hoping to God that he can catch up. And because there's no flash, he is gonna end up going. Oh my goodness, is this the TP of the century? Not a chance. He ends up going down. That's gonna be OSU Miller taking down expels. Almost a good play, Will, with the uh, with the auto for the shield, and then hoping that he can TP fast enough to not get stunned. Yeah, I was about to say if that worked, I would have been like so surprised because like I was like, there's like no way he actually survives with this much HP. If he if he had like maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty more HP, it's possible. IYB is looking though. Flash committed already from uh, the Kragler, and it's not gonna be anything else after that. To just 
flash for nothing. But Lilia is in the area. They're trying to get the Azir's wave in. There is three for three potential. But yeah, the Udyr walked away a little bit too far. Lilia's going to be trying to commit onto this fight. The bowling ball of Doom does not land. And now the counter push is going to go through. The bubble does land for Nami and a lot of poke damage. Ignite has dropped. This man's a mad lad. Flash oh, wow. forward. Even one more auto. Oh, wow. Just not enough. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the power of the Nami right there. A lot of people believe that the power of Lucian Nami comes from the Lucian. Nah, Nami actually does some deeps, bro. Uh, I really actually able to slide and dive, uh, slide and dive uh, through those minions. Not quite able to really pick up anything there. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far, I mean, really, the only thing that's really happened so far is the top side of the map really getting those kills going. Set is up about 20 plus CS though on top of this poppy. Yeah, he's been farming really well. Uh, same with Aurelia. Aurelia is not the hardest champion to farm. She's been sacrificing her HP for that farm, uh, but she has been doing really well to get under the tower and still get those minions. Hex Flash, not gonna come into anything. Meanwhile, on the bot side, we do see Lucian has barely a lead right now. They're just, the only reason he has like even, yeah, it's basically even CS. It's not really much else on there. Uh, meanwhile, in the mid lane, we are gonna be going in a little bit, not much else. Miller is just in the area, looking for potentially some other angle. Uh, and it's just going to be a quiet little early game. Meanwhile, Miller is going to be looking to maybe start out this dragon and get something early. There is vision to see if he is potentially on it. Lilia is in the area to potentially try and get something going. Draven is under tower right now, just farming up, staying safe. Nothing crazy. Uh, Udyr is going to be able to get that early dragon, though. And uh, first dragon of the game goes over to blue. All right. They are going to get their first dragon of the game here. No real contest. Actually, could be a potential contest here. Oh yeah, it looks like the Nami's going to be going on the bubble right there, and they, it's a little bit of stun onto the Lucian, but nothing else is going to happen. Udyr's still in the area, Bowling Ball of Doom comes in, but not sure exactly why she decided to go in there, and ends up giving up a kill to the Lucian, a 1 for 0. Yeah, especially with not having the flash, right? Like, I already gotten flash blown by Admirable Potato, basically just like, uh, brute forcing the Nami's way into the situation, but... Uh, yeah, definitely uh, a bit surprised, like we said, to talk about like you know, how like you know, you're not really in a position as it is to really contest for the dragon. You try to force the play anyways. Miller pathing around, trying to get onto the Draven there with no success. Yeah, just a pretty pretty steady early game. I mean, both teams, I mean, Big Old Leads only 100. Poppy Ulti just trying to deny some minions. Ooh, they cancel. Yeah, not going to be going through on that. Just get a grass proc and walk away. Set's looking for maybe some more damage, but just not enough. The Hex Flash goes through. The Beautiful is here. All the pushes back Kragler into that, but the stun's going to be enough to be able to not put any more DPS on your cow. We're really halal in this stream, so we're not we're not killing any cows today. Yeah, it's actually really, really close there because the pushback had just gotten a little bit closer um, into the wall. It could have been a pretty big disaster for Krangler because he actually probably would have ended up dying because he has not flashed on level 6 yet. But a fight is brewing at the Rift Herald. It is a 4 versus 2 though, so probably not looking to make anything happen this too early in the game. Yeah, ult into the set. He's going to take onto the Alistar. Alistar does not have ulti, but the Poppy ult does knock away set. Now she's stunning the Zier into CC chain, getting the kill. Oh, sorry, my bad. I thought that was a zero. That was actually the Nami that ended up going down there. You know, Lucian's going to be throwing down the calling, and that's going to him picking up the Lilia as a trade. Three for three, or sorry, one for one, ending in a score of three for three kills right now. And uh, again, the gold lead's basically even, but... And Harold is given over to Blue Side, who has the very minor gold lead at the moment. So I'm very curious as to where we're going to be dropping that Harold, whether it's top side or mid, or even trying to get some of these bot lanes to play. Place. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's probably just gonna be like like you know where ideally you know uh, Miller is gonna end up be popping next. You know, obviously you know bot side is looking for a potential play here. Basby, admirable, looking for a play, but improving already doing a good job backing away, not taking too much danger. Expels actually looking for a bit of a fight under the tower. Oh, the flash! He under o overestimated the damage that he had and ends up taking too many tower shots. And now meanwhile in the middle, exact same things happening, overestimating Ooh, the damage actually, of the champion. Good, it's a one for one. He does deny the wave. Uh, but yeah, just uh, a little bit of a misplay there from Johnny Rockets there. Trying to maybe go a little bit too aggressive. Back in the day when you used to max your W, oh, maybe Miller? that does a look at the Hex Flash right there onto the Udyr and the knock up. And it's going to be the stun, simple as can be. Lily has very easy to catch people are trying to run. The pushback was a little bit sus. Not sure if that was the play. You can still chase him down though. He is turning around. He has a big shield. The slam and it is. Oh, the Draven cash in. Draven, that's a big cash in onto him. They're now chasing onto the Azir, but it's just going to be a Dark Harvest proc, and that's going to be it. 
Yeah, it's actually got a really big cash in there for the Draven. I think it's going to be... A, a, yeah, he's sitting on 1,700 gold just in the bank. Uh, is of about 500 gold on the Lucian, which is basically what he cashed in for. Um, so definitely feeling really, really good for him for his sake. But yeah, so I think overall, like, a lots of fights happening sporadically all over the map. It's 10 minutes in, 10 kills across the board. These guys, even though it is the last game of the night, still looking to play as frisky as they can, IYB. Trying to get damage on the Ariandale does take the tower shot uh, towards the end there, but a lot of tower points are falling to Baz B. I think Crankler is looking for a wrap around. The ward is there, though. Yeah, he does have a little bit of a speed boost buff from uh, the Nimbus Cloak. The ulti does go through, but the gets cleansed instantly, Captain Jack style. Kong does go through onto the Alistar. Alistar is still level 5, by the way. He does not have his ulti, and he is taking quite a bit of damage. Uh, the bubble does not land onto the Draven. They're just going to shove out the wave and try and take down this tower. There is a potential for a dive afterwards. The smite has to be true. She's not going to be able to kill it at all. And it is not going to be enough for the tower take there. And it's just going to be the Herald for a couple plates there. Yeah, just a couple of plates, but still, you end up salvaging the play and still get the gold out of it. Right place at the right time there for Miller. We talked about right how, like, you know, typically, like, when it comes to most junglers, when you have the Herald, if you are in an area, uh, like, obviously, you'd like to get your gold to some of your carries, uh, like, maybe the Azir, maybe the Lucian, but if you are able to kind of just get some, like, as you're pathing towards them, then ultimately, it doesn't really affect, like, how you're clearing your camps and stuff. Yeah, you definitely want to try and get it as clean as possible on the drops but uh dragon is spawning here in 15 seconds so it's gonna be exciting to see kind of the uh the brawl that we're gonna have here in a couple seconds here if they're gonna position for dragon it looks like udir is willing to give up this first dragon he is clearing his top set at the moment uh but there's a lot of resets happening so they don't necessarily have to give it if they don't want to yeah and i'm curious to see like you know exactly like where the dragon is going to end up being playing right because um, you know, because the last time this fight did end up going down, Blue Side was able to pick up the first dragon of the game, as well as you know, pick up an extra kill onto final walk because he kind of just egregiously walked. But Johnny Rockets is still on the top side of the map, not looking to TP in anytime soon. And the second dragon of the game does go over to final walk and improving. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be a Chemtech Soul again for us, which will make us uh, see a lot of funny interactions with the Blast Plants. The sweepers and also the oh but i as i'm talking about that the ulti does go through onto the udir udir is just trying to kite away he does get quite a bit of distance with it and the zero ulti nice is ulti. clean the flash goes through trying to find that final q but it's not able to get there the oh. very interesting Serima shuffle oh. but it does work out in the end the sun goes through onto lilia lilia it does have the damage but oh we got double him. kill for arendale and the triumph fuel is just enough to be able to survive the leandry burn and also the lilia burn Wow, actually, yeah, really interesting sh uh, usage of the E there, just trying to get as much space as he could from both the Lilia and the Irelia there. Ended up working out. Does potentially getting wrapped around here by Krangler. Yeah, he should not walk into this bush, but he does go for it anyway. Oh! And Alistar, a little bit of a misplay there with uh, some ability uses, and I'm pretty sure he might have been in range for, uh, for a headbutt hold if he didn't use his E there. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like you really want to make sure you try to get that ability to kind of to come through. But um, I know it's like, as, as I'm a bit of an Alistar player myself, and one of the things I, I had to make sure that happens is the second the Alistar animation happens, uh, where he starts sort of flying at you with the with the headbutt, that's when you, you just spam the crap out of your Q button for the pulverize. If you, do, if you ever do Q first, you will look just like Detro did. Uh, a bit of a sad cow. Yeah, just uh, a little bit of a punt and then hoping, hoping that they, it works out in the end. But uh, another shove in here in the top side. I mean, top side, uh, we're taking stock on what's happening. Uh, it's going pretty good for the Poppy in this matchup, which honestly, uh, I don't think it should go this way myself. I think that Poppy's playing it very well, uh, surviving the top dive and uh, also able to uh, get, uh, get a lot of farm under the tower where normally maybe you don't get that stuff. And she did opt for the Jack Crow uh, a protector or Protean. Protean, yeah, there you go, Jack Crow Protean. But meanwhile, there's a bot lane dive, and the Zero Ulti does go through, knocking out the Alistar. Alistar does have his Ulti, he just chooses not to use it, gets chunked to around half. Set flashes in to stop the Lilia, and he does get the Ulti now too. The punt, and somehow the Zero gets it with the Leandris proc in the end, and that's just gonna be a one for zero. Good call to TP there and to stop that dive. 
Yeah, it's actually it's a really good call. It's actually a really good faith by Arian Dell recognizing that he was not gonna die from the initial dive attempt, right? So he saved his ulti, you know, letting them take a little bit more extra tower shots. He could have he could have casted it early. He could have punted them out before they started taking tower shots, but instead ended up just uh, fighting him a little bit out. And uh, it does look like you know resets are kind of happening coming through. Red Herald obviously was picked up, but Ooh. he has no ulti now. Yeah, and the Alira really does go in. She does land the ult. He does miss the stun, but she's going to go down for the turret shot. This is the same thing that happened. I think people keep forgetting about how the turret ramps go. It uh, definitely does a lot of damage if you stay under there too long. And a one-for-one -one trade. And the thing is that later in this game goes, these one-for-one -one trades start becoming a little bit less, less worth it for the Aurelia. Uh, meanwhile, we're looking over here in the top side. The Pulverize is going to go through onto Lucian. Lucian does have the cleanse to cleanse out of that ulti. He does put the calling down now that Udyr's dead right in front line. A lot of damage onto the poppy, but she is pretty tanky. And the set has now finally arrived, gets the pull back onto the Alistar. Alistar does choose ulti now. Reduces only a couple autos there and walks away. A whole lot of summoners and ultimates burnt for a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, didn't have access to the showstopper there. Couldn't really get into the fight the way that he really wanted to. Um, but I do think that, you know, obviously, um, you know, I, I do like the attempt there onto Basby, uh, because, um, he was very vulnerable in that situation, but nice play by Admirable, Admirable Potato to use the wave in a way that knocked up not only two members, but stalled out the rest of the members from actually coming in as quick as they wanted to, um, and was, as, and it was able to, uh, keep his AD carry alive in the situation. Yeah, I mean, he definitely did what he needed to do to try and save Lucian. But meanwhile, in the bot lane, we're looking at another attempt onto the Azir. This time, it should be successful. He gets the pushback. He is able to get the shuffle away. Really smart use, actually, with the pushback. Because the thing is, with the Azir E, you actually stop on the first champion hit. So he pushed them all back before using his E to be able to make sure he gets the maximum distance. And Nami's there to stop the Irelia from going for a third tive in this game. Yep, but uh, B is going to end up paying for it. Yeah, he does get stunned up by the uh, Udyr and ends up going down to the Azir. Four people there. It's a little bit unfair. And you know it's true because it rhymes. Yeah, Ariandale is starting to get really, really strong in this game. 6-2 and 0. Definitely starting to feel himself in this game. Even though... Oh, actually! Execute! Wow. The execute from the stacks. Able to get that. But the Nami does get the Gromp. So honestly, what is worth? I'm scared. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the second cash into the game for the Draven. We haven't really actually talked about the bot lanes all that much because the action's been happening up towards the top side of the map. But both Eddie Carry is sitting at 2, 0, and 1. Uh, definitely feeling uh, pretty good about their own individual performances so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Draven's right now is when he starts paying dividends, getting these kills, getting, cashing on these stacks, and also his positioning has been very good so far in this game, not getting caught out and, uh, you know, being able to stay safe but the Krangler is actually in a really good flank spot if he can get somebody else coming in here he does find the Nami punts her back he tries to go for the knockup but it does not work the ulti does go through on the Lucian but Lucian doesn't have cleanse but he doesn't need it he is getting caught out a little bit here with Poppy the stun goes through but now the Udyr is there to try and run defense he is on there now the Azir is able to get the pushback gets absolutely oh, the pullback from point. the set gets two people Udyr gets a double kill they are getting the slow onto the Poppy but that's just gonna be it for the play this set pull was massive in that fight. Yeah, huge showstopper into the three-man stun by Johnny Rockets there. Poppy gonna look to ulti away the wave, potentially. Maybe just threatening the usage, not quite gonna cast that one there. But yeah, so far, this, um, once again, mid lane, it's actually the mid lane's very, you know, IYB. Aurelia goes in, gets the execute onto the Nami, but she pays for it. Support for mid lane are not exactly the trade you want to go for, but at least she was able to clear most of the wave. Yeah, was able to clear away what's most of the way. Does end up saving the tier one tower while also trading a one for one in the process. Could have almost maybe even got more kills there, but unfortunately the bubble came through from Admiral Potato, was able to keep in place sure, just long enough. Yeah. The Admiral Potato is doing really well on this Nami, showing his mechanics with the stuns and also the, the ulti uh, in the top side play to be able to kind of stop anybody from going forward. She's but he's showing uh, a really good uh, job on on the champion. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait. We're also got to obviously wait and see kind of how obviously the rest of this game does end up playing out a little bit here. But um, you know, at least just kind of looking at the items, right? Azir almost at the two item breakpoint. Lucian relatively close to two items as well. But with Draven's two cash outs, he already has the two items. So Draven is still really really strong, despite the fact that Red Team hasn't really been winning that many fights here recently.
Yeah, and I'm actually very interested about the Gale Force purchase on the Draven. Usually we've seen uh, for Mythics on Draven uh, the Eclipse Spy uh, because it gives you that Omni Vamp and it gives you that extra little bit of damage on the first burst, which uh, Draven really likes. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't seen many Gale Forces on Draven. I guess uh, right now is a good time to try and experiment different builds and see kind of what works. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen a lot of Gale Force either, but I'm I, I would imagine it's still a pretty good item for him because, you know, uh, he can just Gale Force very aggressively, use that extra movement speed that he gets from his Adrenaline to just continuously just a axe people down. And it's like it's At that point, it becomes almost nearly impossible to get away from Draven if he can t continuously catch those axes. Yeah. And it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. Draven, as a champion, has pretty good uh, scaling compared to Illusion in the later stages of the game. But the main thing is the positioning with the axes and catching them. So uh, seeing how that's going to work out in this mid-game, late-game, it's going to be interesting. Meanwhile, the Poppy's getting a little bit caught out here. She thinks she's safe under the tower, but the tower is going to go down. Yeah, the tower does end up going down to Arendelle and Miller. But not really able to contest, um, really, the, the, I guess, the, the overall state of the game. Um, but... Dragon obviously will be coming up here relatively soon in about a minute and 30s time. So we could end up seeing, obviously, you know, when it comes to, I guess, like this game itself, right? Like what the next objective is going to be playing for. And the third objective could end up putting the blue side on soul points. So definitely could be a dragon that the blue team does really want to play for. And item breakpoints are still obviously coming through. Azir and Lucian are basically going to be on their second items for this dragon fight. And if you look at red team's uh, kind of composition here, like team fighting wise, um, they don't have the greatest of champions when it comes to team fight. Like Draven isn't necessarily known as a great team fighter. Neither is Irelia. They're more based on like individual champions. But these champions can certainly pop off and go crazy if, if given the opportunity. Meanwhile, talking about popping off and going crazy, Bray, uh, but has B dashing forward and uh, trying to get onto the Lush onto the Draven, slowing him down, but. Uh, Nothing comes out of that. Lily is in the area. Alistar's in the area. Uh, right now, they're trying to get some vision for the dragon. Uh, this dragon's pretty important because for them, this will be their second dragon, so that way they can fight for soul point. Meanwhile, for the blue team, this will put them onto soul point. Uh, but they are going to get this mid lane prio, getting the tower down, and also dropping the Azir tower. This is, in, you know, 20 seconds before the dragon, just so they can ensure that they have the priority through that lane. Yeah, absolutely. But look at Detro though. Detro has wrapped around the enemy team. He is behind the dragon pit. I believe he just got question mark pinged on the map, though. So I think they have an idea he's in there. Yep, they found him. Yeah, they now know where he is. Now the cow has to go for a little bit of a run around. The slow has been applied. The speed stacks have been applied for the Lucian passive. And now it's just going to be him against the world. And the world hurts. Yeah, absolutely. And this is basically almost guaranteed to be the third dragon of the game over to blue side because without your support it's gonna be really hard to actually find that engage uh because obviously you just don't necessarily want to commit to a four versus five so instead they're gonna probably look to play elsewhere they're gonna clear out a couple of camps in their own jungle to make sure that that doesn't end up getting taken away but uh obviously they're probably looking to push out some minions here uh looking to gain a little bit of position on the map yeah i mean the next objective is going to be the dragon and it's going to be or baron should i say so we'll definitely see what happens next on this game here. Um, we're now looking at some resets, uh, looking to maybe get some items built in here and uh, potentially start trying to contest this top side vision for blue side. Uh, Final walk, uh, he's having a bit of a rough go here, but his champion does get a little bit better and easier to pull off later into the game. Uh, so I'm excited to see kind of how the Lilia will be playing out in these fights. Azir just getting a little bit of poke, trying to get into this vision area, but unfortunately, it's just not going to be the case. He doesn't have the numbers advantage. They're still trying to shut out mid. And uh, vision is still in control, slightly for red side and the top side, but slow and steady. Blue side will try and get some of that stuff cleared out. Yeah, Baron obviously is going to be the next major focus for both teams. I really is looking to crash down. She is in a bush, unseat with no warts there who could look for a play onto the mid lane there. Actually, Krangler! Yeah, Krangler goes in, he does pop the ulti, and it's just gonna be the Lily going in. She flashes forward trying to get the Lucian, but it's not gonna be enough damage. The Udyr is taking quite a bit. The TP is coming through. The, it's gonna be the Azir trying to get the Sharima push back, but it's unfortunately not enough. The flash forward from the Draven backwards, should I say, is enough to save him. And that could be a Baron angle, though. And they, a lot of members are low on the side of the red team, so... You could potentially go and pull the trigger, but the, the Ravenous Hydra does heal up Draven quite a bit. 
Aurelia is trying to sneak around. I'm not sure if they see this. The Udyr does land the stun. Azir's over the wall. Gets a lot of damage down on Aurelia. And that is going to be a pickup on to Arendale again. He is now 7-3-2 on the Azir. Having a phenomenal game. Yeah, this could end up being the Baron as well. They're actually they're still looking for a play. Just trying to shove out the mid lane here and get some of this push out. But they catch out onto the Draven. Poppy goes in trying to stop this from happening. Lilia walks really randomly up there. The set ulties the Draven from the angle and gets the shutdown onto him. And now it's just the Poppy and the Alistar versus all five members of blue. This for sure is the Baron. Yep, yeah, it is going to be the Baron going up to the blue side. Obviously, you know, with the jungle being dead, there's no way of contesting it. Expels doesn't really have any damage to objective. So even if he did somehow try, he would ultimately just be costing his life. Not going to really look for the play. And honestly, I think, you know, when it came down to it, you know, for the side of, for the blue side here, um, they wanted to really, they wanted to make sure to push out the wave. But then they realized, okay, like, like, these guys are out of position. We can just chase them down. They had Johnny Rockets on the side, able to crack down onto Improving. Even though Improving had a nice little knockback there on the Draven, wasn't quite able to gain just enough just from the set, able to flash on top of him. And the, the rest of the members, which is a major disadvantage there. And now all of a sudden, the goal lead is going to start ballooning here because they still have some towers to pick up. Dragon obviously spawning in about two minutes time that they're going to want to most likely pick up. Um, before, like, you know, um, with, with I guess, like, after they end up using their Baron push, uh, but still, so tier two, all, all tier two towers remaining for blue team to pick up, and I would imagine that's what they're gonna look to achieve. I mean, uh, you were talking about last game how you wanted to see Chemtech Soul, and here we are. True, true, finally getting to the point of Chemtech Soul. I want to see it, like, don't at least okay, you can you can end the game after a minute and 30, right? But until then, it's not allowed. Yeah, just, just let the man see what what the power what the power of this soul holds. The one soul to rule them all. Uh, but yeah, they're just trying to get some. Uh, the, all right now, they're just trying to get lane priority so that they can get the vision. But it looks like Johnny Rockets oh, Johnny? is a little bit caught out. He doesn't realize that there's three members there. All three of them are jumping onto him. He does the showstopper, big shield onto that. The ulti is going to go through. They are actually are doing a really good job of stopping the uh, oh. the blast plant. But the knockback actually stops him from jumping all the way forward. And it is just going to be a simple pickup on there. Final Walker is the one that yoinks the kill there. That is now one for zero, but the mid tower is being sieged down, and that will be it being taken. And now they're threatening for potentially more, but the dragon is spawning in 42 seconds, 41. They might just end up going towards it and trying to clear out the vision that was placed down. Yeah, so it was still though, it's like this this dragon is still, even though you took out Johnny Rocket, it's still not the easiest to contest. Krangler going a little too early. Yeah, he goes forward, and now the pump back onto the Lilia. Not sure if that was the right play. Lilia is very squishy. She ends up going down. Now, Krangler, even though he's ulted, he is definitely unstoppable, or stoppable, should I say, and ends up going down there. Buzz B picking up a double kill straight into this dragon. Now with no jungler, you can't contest, and that surely is a soul. Yeah, Arian Dale just going to push down the mid lane here. I would be looking Ooh. for him. The Gale Force goes forward. He is able to land Bass, but now he's kind of in a bit of an awkward spot. And he ends up getting caught out by this Udyr. Now, Baz B, another I kill mean, going on a legendary. Meanwhile, IB, IYBC gets a little bit of uh, stun on there, but uh, is able to survive. The Poppy Alti on the set just knocks him away. He's just sauntering back in, and they are going to push for the end. I lied to you. They did not go for the soul. They're just going to pull the trigger on the end again. Come on, man. Okay, maybe they troll. Maybe they troll. They might throw here, you know, you never know. There's still one tower available. Set does get the true damage onto oh, IYBC. There's just way too much damage overall. Then they're too tanky. They're not taking enough damage either. The Lilia pick might have been good, but not good enough. Taking way too much damage. And it's just going to be the end of this one. Blue team takes a win. Finally, blue side wins one game and these three games. Man, I just want to see the Chemtech soul. That's all I wanted, you know? Like I, like I said, you know, like after... You no, know, it's even up too. It's not like it's on. It's not like it's dead or anything. But, uh, but yeah, a really good game there for Blue Side. Obviously, you know they kind of the uh, Arian Dill obviously had some really pop off moments in this game. And you know we didn't really talk about all that much about Baz V, but this guy finished nine zero and five. Right, this guy once again had a very quiet, and solid, consistent performance, which typically is something you actually like to see out of your AD carry. Right, like a champion that you know, um attack damage carry, like it was something that you can see like consistently have solid performances you may not be the star of every single game but if you can do your job consistently time and time again that's something you obviously like to see 
Um, but you know, still, I think you know, uh, for the red team, the game the game still felt relatively even, even though like team fights weren't really exactly always going their way. Um, I think you know, final walk obviously had some pretty uh, solid uh, ultimates there on the Lilia, playing a bit of a different style that we saw from game number one and game number two. Uh, but unfortunately, they just weren't quite able to get things uh, together. The composition, they, a lot of their engaged were pretty hard to find, right? Because you're relying on like Poppy or Alistar getting in there, which can be relatively easily denied by like a champion like Set or like Azir. And even the Nami tidal wave, like we saw uh, in the top lane a couple of times, where like you just throw out the you throw out the tidal wave, and anytime if you get near it, you just get instantly knocked up, and it's just so hard to actually uh, play around it. Yeah, Nami does the same, a similar job to what Renata does, and yeah. uh, it's it's really good in like these disengage moments where if somebody tries to engage onto you guys, it's very good to just kind of push that forward. And if you have any of that like uh, follow up CC or CC initially, uh, it's really good follow up CC as well. So uh, Nami, pretty good champion right now, I think in the meta. Uh, Lucian, I'm I'm not a big Lucian fan to be to be fair. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm I think the champion's good, but I don't think it's amazing. Uh, but obviously, Basby doing a phenomenal job on it, which uh, shows just kind of shows how good this guy is. You know, he's been performing solidly throughout all three games. I believe we saw him, uh, mm. or no? Uh, did we see him all three games? Uh, who's sorry? Basby. And we saw him in two games. We saw him in two games. Yeah. So on the Varus and on the Lucian, and uh, on the Varus game, he had a phenomenal, you know, performance. Lethality Varus, which we don't really <laughs> see that often. Uh, usually, it's relegated to either on hit or uh, AP. But on hit wasn't really the play on that game, and because uh, you needed a little bit of uh, AD damage, and you couldn't go AP because uh, you had AP topside uh, all the way, so uh, he had to opt for the lethality build. But it worked out in the end, and he did showed he made it look really, really good. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like we talked about before, this is our last game of the night. So uh, we, we obviously do appreciate each and every single one of you coming out to the stream. Uh, we do have one more day left up and available uh, for um, our tryouts for this week's game. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to, you know, you guys will come back and watch tomorrow's stream. But as of tonight, we are officially uh, done and dusted. Uh, so uh, I just wanted, wanted to thank each and every one of you for coming out. Um, and that is going to be the end of our stream. So uh, good night, everyone. <laughs>